Okay, Bam. it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, human rights, they come from human dignity. Now you have criminalization of migration. We do have instruments and structures to help us to treat each other as human beings, as children of God. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to Christ Alive. I am Karav Roshekeze Ramayla, the only angel at home with three siblings and my parents living in Katla home and I am with Sean Nicholas van Staden. I'm a Jesuit, a scholastic living here at this beautiful place um, and I'm information for, for priesthood here. I've met Sean a few times, it's the first time I heard his name is Nicholas. Ah so. yes, my second name is Nicholas. <laughs> Um, this is Christ Alive, which is a coming together of mm -hmm. the Jesuit Institute and the Archdiocese of Johannesburg Youth Office with trying to just engage with, with each other We're in doing conversation. A, co a collab. A collab. <laughs> <laughs> with the Archdiocese of Johannesburg, the Youth Office specifically, um, in what? Journeying together, talking, having mm -hmm. meaningful conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And conversations like through which we can find God in our lives mm -hmm. and kind of journey together and so journey with God. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And we're not alone. We have our wonderful teammates who are terrified of the camera. We have Minier Pedro Ferraz, which is our sound guy, but also our network coordinator in the youth office. And we also have Dylan Naika, which is our HOD and our camera guy. We call Pedro Spiderman, but he doesn't have webs. So anyone, if you could help us out. We're looking for some donations. Donation of webs that yeah. Pedro could use. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah. They're, they're afraid of the camera. So we're going to do like a face reveal one day. But for now, for now, you just have to trust us that these are the guys behind the camera. <laughs> but yeah, man, we hope to journey with you, learn with you and be inspired by you in conversation and led by god oh god is our boss by the way yeah, yeah he's the so, number one yeah and he offered this beautiful space <laughs> easy <laughs> but yeah so, thank you thank you so much we hope to have more conversations with you mm -hmm. christ and we alive. hope you enjoy <laughs> journeying with us on this christ alive as well All right, we're rolling. Good day. I don't know how to say good day, good Just morning, good welcome. evening. <laughs> welcome to Christ Alive. This is our very first episode. So, hey. <laughs> so, welcome to the show. Um, and today's uh, topic, uh, we're going to talk about um, two important events, one of which is happening on the 10th of December, which is the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the 18th of December, which is International Migrants Day. So to talk about that, we've joined by our guest today, who's Father Rampe Slobo. Did I say that's your surname right? You did. You managed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did I get it wrong? <laughs> you managed. Our guest is Father Rampe Slobo, who's a Jesuit who works exactly with uh, migrants and refugees um, and in the area of social justice um, for the Jesuits in Southern Africa. So welcome. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Thank you, Karol. Thank you for being with us. So, Father, could you like just introduce yourself? Give us a little brief about who Father is, aside from being a Jesuit. Oh. <laughs> 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 My name is Rampe Shobo. I'm a South African Jesuit, born and bred in Soweto. I am uh, the provincial, uh, what you call the delegate for um migration for social justice and uh, environmental justice in the southern africa province of the jesuits so um, <clears throat> basically i i work in the area in these three areas and trying to coordinate some work of the province in these areas migration uh, social justice and uh, environmental justice uh, that's basically the long and short of it uh, it's, it's quite interesting that each time we know when people hear that your father, they ask, oh, from which parish you come from? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not one of those fathers who work in a parish, although I do live in a parish, but um, 
I'm not responsible for the running of the parish. I so my responsibilities they are in these three areas that I've just mentioned. Okay. So Father, mm. where apart from Soweto are you? I am from home is Orlando East, but home parish is Orlando West. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you move? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up I grew up mainly in Orlando West. I did my par- my primary school in Orlando West. My my father comes from Orlando West, oh, and wow. uh, they were in the parish in Orlando Saint Martin de Porres, and so uh, yeah, I spent most of my time in Orlando West, but I slept in Orlando East, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and then joined the Jesuits, which uh, which is which <laughs> run, uh, run the parish in Orlando West. West. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, Father, <laughs> tell us a bit about this this day, the seventy fifth. Uh, Anniversary, anniversary of, of the yeah. uh, UDHR, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So, uh, yeah, you would know or from our historical uh, knowledge that uh, the Second World War, it ended in 1945. Okay. So uh, after that, I think the international community started discussing that these things should not happen again. Mm -hmm. And remember, this was the second time they they say they were saying it should not happen again. (laughs) Somewhere around 1918. Yeah. They 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 said this will never happen again after the great after the Great War. (laughs) And it happened uh, about was it 20, 22 years later. You know, uh, it happened again. Yeah, it happened (laughs) again. You you know, and uh, and it was interesting that uh, the then Pope Benedict uh, the 15, no, we had Pope Benedict the 16th in our in lifetime. Our lifetime yeah. Yeah. yeah, Pope Benedict the 15th, he was the Pope at the end of the First World War. Mm. And uh, he warned them and he said, you know, whatever agreement was put in place then, that was there in place to say it will never happen again. He said, there's nothing about God in this agreement of yours. Mm. And if anything has no, it's not, <clears throat> does not have God in it, um, it's most likely to fail. Mm. And 22 years later, so, you know, it happened it again. It happened yeah. again, it failed. Yeah. yeah. So in 1948, sorry, at the end of the Second World War, beginning of 46, 47, so some great minds of that time, including one of the Catholic philosophers, uh, Jacques Maritain, they were involved in drafting this document. Um, which uh, came to be known as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Mm -hmm. adopted on the 10th of December, 1948. And what was interesting in that document, if you look at in the preamble of it, it brought in something which was very close to some kind of uh, philosophical theology, uh, talking about the human dignity. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because in that preamble, there is a mention of, of the human dignity, everybody, every one of us having that dignity, which uh, we know from the theological perspective mm-hmm. comes from the Imago Dei or the image of God. Mm-hmm. Um, so that document was drafted by these great minds, including Jacques Maritain, and uh, he was, who was the Franco-Swiss uh, Catholic philosopher. And then in 1948, on the 10th of uh, December in Paris, the document was adopted uh, by uh, many of the uh, representatives of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And it came to be known as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Mm. We talk about this now as the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But ironically, on the 9th of December, there was also an adoption of another convention, which is the Convention Against Genocide. Okay, We wow. talk of, mm. <laughs> you know, that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is also 75 years old. Or, okay. Yeah, you know. Mm. But anyway, let's stick to the UDHR, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So basically, for the first time, there was this um, uh, progressive document that uh, the international community adopted and uh, kind of made commitment that they will protect the uh, freedom of people, the human rights of people, mm. and uh, try and avoid what had happened uh, before, yeah, mm. you know, in the years before. So, yes, so for 75 years, they've been trying. Mm. 
Um, what do you think is missing? Because now it's been <clears throat> 75 years and we're still finding issues like what's happening in Congo, what's happening in with um, like Palestine, Palestine mm, and mm. what's happening in the Ukraine or the Russia. So what do you think is missing? Because we've had, I think maybe I can say the conversation has been happening for 75 years. Mm. Why is there still no solution in, to some of these things? One of the main main uh, problems, I think, uh, which uh, actually, uh, <laughs> interesting enough, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth now, <laughs> <laughs> from one Benedict to another. <laughs> yeah, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth mentioned in the in his last address to the uh, United Nations General Assembly. I think it was in two thousand and eight, April of two thousand and eight. He cautioned the leaders of the world and said, you know, <clears throat> if we continue uh, talking about human rights from a legal perspective, I mean, I can't remember the right words, uh, you know, but his argument was we, we, we shouldn't be looking at them from a legal uh, 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 perspective because then they become legal arguments. So the, the, yes. the best person mm. to put the best argument in becomes the winner in, in, in a way. And mm. I think that's what he was alluding to, that mm. they cannot be looked in that perspective from perspective of uh, uh, legal assertions. Mm. Mm. Then it becomes more, the most powerful or the best argument rather yes. than about kind of the fundamental dignity. Exactly. That mm. okay. And that was precisely the point that mm. these, these uh, I mean, human rights, they come from human dignity and they should be looked from mm. a moral and ethical perspective yes. mm. Mm. where we know that everybody, they are innate and, and intrinsic in, in, in everybody. So everyone has those human rights because of the human dignity that mm. we all have because mm -hmm. of the image of God that each one of us yeah. carries. Yes, yeah. So so that is not a legal argument. It's, yeah. it's a moral, moral theory, in, yeah. in, 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 you know. So that was his argument. And so you were asking what's way, so I think that's where the, the fundamental problem is that until we look at them from that perspective that, you know, each and every one of us has this human dignity because each and every one of us was created in the image of God. Mm. Mm. Then we can start thinking of, okay, I cannot violate your rights. So rights should be looked at that perspective. And from the social, te the, uh, social teaching perspective, the, the Catholic, Catholic social teaching, Catholic social yeah. teaching mm. these human rights, they emanate from the fact that we all have this human dignity, we are all created in the image of God. Mm. That's intrinsic. And mm. they can they are not accorded. Nobody can give you those rights. Yeah. You not not accorded means that they're not <coughs> like you have them whether yeah. they're not given to you. They're not they're something you, you have. Yes, we, exactly. we kind of recognize them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Because mm -hmm. because of that image of God that mm -hmm. that is intrinsic and uh, and and they transcend any belief cultural background or whatever mm -hmm. they they are yeah intrinsic yeah intrinsic okay. i think that that's that's the that's a good way and yeah. so and until we start looking at them from that perspective mm. uh, i i don't think we, the the violations that we see will continue, will continue. Mm. so so the the basic principle is that we have this intrinsic human dignity and then what are some of the human rights that flow from that? Like, what are some of the rights espoused in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? Well, human dignity. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, when you look at those rights, the, the rights that are enshrined in the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, they are all about the protection, preservation, and promotion of human dignity. Okay. You know. The so right. it's things like the right to, did, does that one already talk about the right to healthcare and education and healthcare, that kind of thing? education, yeah. uh, a, a right to asylum or a right to nationality, mm. uh, whatever right. If you look at all those, there are 30 of those articles. In, mm -hmm. in, in, 30 articles, okay. Who, who, uh, which uh, um, refer to different kinds of rights. Mm. So, and and e each one is just a different way of kind of protecting mm. and promoting our well, dignity. Yes. Okay. It's, it's about the protection, the preservation of, mm. of human dignity. Mm. And, and when just let's maybe look at the violation of human rights that mm. you can think of that are going on, mm. that violates the dignity of the person. Mm. Yes. That violates the dignity of the person that kind of humiliate and uh, compromise mm. that 
image of God that each and uh, that the person or the victim carries, mm -hmm. you know. So you see from that you can understand that human rights are about the preservation and the protection of this human of dignity. The human because dignity. once they are violated, then the dignity of the person is violated. is violated. Yeah, yeah. You know? uh, a, a friend of mine said that. If you're struggling to understand human rights, just think of the violation of human rights, and then it mm -hmm. almost becomes clear because you you mm -hmm. you see someone suffering yeah. or you see someone like having those rights violated and their dignity violated, you can immediately see yeah. why why why, the, why it's important say to declare these rights that we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and and the other thing, when you uh, when you look at these rights, even from uh, a Catholic social teaching perspective. Mm. You know the principles of the of the Catholic social teaching. The fundamental one, or the, 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 the one of the important ones, it's the human dignity, mm. Mm. and then uh, which we have been talking about now. Then you also have the common good. I mean, mm. even these uh, 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 human rights, when you look at them, it's all about the common good, mm. the well-being of all of us. You know, uh, when somebody's rights are violated, then it's it's a violation of the common good mm. the principle of the common good and uh, the catholic social teaching it also talks of solidarity especially solidarity with the marginalized with the poor mm. Mm. those in the margins of the society the human rights they are about making sure that those of our society of our human family mm. uh, who are in the margins they enjoy this common good they enjoy preservation of human dignity as well yes because once somebody lives in the periphery of society once somebody lives a poor life then the dignity is compromised as well mm -hmm. so these human rights they are also uh, well they are compatible you can say the social teaching of the church is compatible. yeah yeah it's, it's in any case the social teaching of the church is much much older than the <laughs> yeah yeah the they, 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 yeah because this is only 75 uh, mm. years old and mm. the social teaching it's been going on since 1899 officially mm. you know uh, so uh, and that's why i think having like people like jacques maritain the drafting of the universal declaration of human rights it, mm. it, it gives you an idea that there was a great influence of the social teaching yeah you can see the, the catholic yeah. thoughts influencing yeah. those yes um, exactly yeah uh, particularly the preservation of the, of, of the yeah, human, human dignity. dignity. Yeah, 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 that's great. And uh, the South African constitution is quite unique in that it wasn't it one of the first to have a bill of rights um, in the constitution itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's true. Uh, uh, I mean, when you look at that chapter two of the constitution, uh, the, the bill of rights, it's, mm. it talks about uh, uh, a lot of rights which are uh, supposed to be uh, accorded. <laughs> I don't like to see use not that, recorded, but they yeah. say, <laughs> because they are not. I mean, I mean, from yeah, a yeah. moral and ethical perspective, mm -hmm. they are not. You know? they're, they're more recognized. They're than, recognized than yes, exactly. Yeah. Recorded and so, maybe respected. Yes, yeah, and, in the way and, we and, live. And even even in that chapter two of, of the bill of I mean of the constitution, the bill of rights, you still find uh, that uh, uh, endeavor to protect and to preserve the human dignity because it's all about you know protecting the dignity of the person mm -hmm. you know and and of course when you look at the background of the drafting of our constitution as well where we were coming from where when it was drafted mm -hmm. you know it was precisely to try and prevent that humiliation that is certain people in our society suffered mm -hmm. and uh, to make sure that moving forward we move with you know, preservation of human dignity, the common mm. good, and solidarity with the marginalized and those in the periphery of our society. Mm. So uh, there is an element of that preservation of uh, uh, human dignity, common good, mm. and, uh, you know, being in solidarity with those who are less fortunate than us. Mm -hmm. So um, with everything that you're saying now, I think especially bringing in the South African constitution, um, we find that a lot of people, a lot of young people to be specific, are up for these movements nowadays. Like you see people holding, I don't want to say protests with the whole Palestine and Israel issue. There's a lot of speaking about things from young people's mm. perspective, but I don't think a lot of learning is taking place as well. We talk about it because we hear a two-minute snippet on TikTok or on Instagram, mm. but... There's no learning that takes place as to where do these issues come from? Why are we still having them today? And how is it that as young people, we can change that moving forward? So what 
I don't, don't want to say what message, but what advice would be would you give to to a lot of young people to try and prevent these things from happening in the future? Because like it's been seventy five years and probably even longer. Yeah. But and we still have we so much still to do. Yeah. We still have so yeah. much to do. So yeah. what is it that needs to happen, especially with young people, to bring about this change that we've been talking about? It's it's really uh, like I was saying. You know, the I think what what Pope Benedict the uh, uh, his accession and his uh, uh, address to the UN in in, in two thousand and eight. It's it was for me it was a striking um, argument, mm. which I think it really holds water and is true because sometimes we like to debate about the rights, we like to argue about who's got rights and all that. But if we start looking at them from a moral and ethical perspective, mm. firstly, that's already half the battle won in my in my view, and and. Uh, <clears throat> So if, if, if that happens, people then would start to understand that this is wrong. Mm. And secondly, we should also focus on responsibilities because rights ah, come with yes, responsibilities. Yes. It's not rights yeah. alone, it's, it's responsibilities not, yeah, yeah, with each one. It's yeah. responsibilities. Mm. You know, I mean, you cannot say, and, and nowadays we talk of uh, uh, the digital space yes. where people, they, they have... Let's let's talk about freedom of expression. Yes, your freedom to express yourself doesn't mean that you are you are free to insult me. Mm. You see, so you have you have freedom to express yourself, but you also have a responsibility not to insult me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, they say your what your freedoms end where the other person's freedoms begin, or something like that, or is it the other way around? <laughs> <laughs> like maybe my yeah. my my rights are not absolute, or my freedoms no. are not absolute. Mm. Yeah, but the the limit of them is where I begin to infringe, infringe on yeah, your exactly, freedoms. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. for every right, I think there is a responsibility. Mm. You know. So, and I think we need to also uh, uh, inculcate that and 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 remind people that mm. yes, you do have rights. But you do have responsibilities as Not well. To, fring, to yeah. infringe on the yeah. other person's yeah. rights. Yeah. So, so and I think you have a. Um, I think also what's needed is a kind of value education and a kind of value formation as well. Because like it's one thing to just say it, but like how do we actually help someone to grow in the value or the virtue, say, of respecting someone's dignity? Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. a long, that's kind of a long term yeah. process. That yeah, you know. and and you mentioned a very important word, mm. respect. Mm. <laughs> Respect not only of human rights, but respect of, of the, the person. person. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. Respect of the person, yeah. and and I think that culture it's it's slowly uh, disappearing. Of, yeah, of I think so as well. It yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It Just is. open Twitter oh. or X. Exactly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, you, you see in in social platforms, in social media platforms, that really they, there's no there's no respect for one another there's no respect for the other person mm -hmm. and so it becomes easy to violate another person's rights yeah. mm -hmm. you Absolutely. know i mean uh, at the moment we're also talking of uh, this uh, uh, gender based violence yes. and femicide and all that it's lack of respect for the woman it's mm -hmm. lack of respect for the other person mm -hmm. which i think and then it's easy for 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 a person who has no respect for the other person to kill a woman yeah. mm -hmm. or to you know, to rape abuse a woman her, or yeah. abuse mm -hmm. her, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I respect it's an important uh, uh, word or concept that mm -hmm. we also need to revisit. M just the ger general moral uh, gener uh, moral uh, regeneration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need you know? that, absolutely. We, 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 we need to look into that as well. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I think also with the digital space, I think the value of the home has has been lost because now there's a conversation I was watching where this 15 year old girl who was in high school was dating a 32 year old DJ mm -hmm. and this guy took advantage of this girl and but all over social media the only thing that was shown was the lavish life that this girl oh, has, yeah. has has been given. So once that relationship ended and she was speaking about the abuse that she experienced, instead of trying to 
actually say, okay, but this already was wrong from the beginning. <laughs> the age gap was already the problem. But instead of trying to, I don't, I don't want to say help, but share with <clears throat> everyone that, okay, this is what I experienced. There's these challenges, there's abuse. You need to not necessarily watch out, but just sharing her story. People are like, yeah, because now you can't live that lavish life, you were abused. Yeah. So, mm. so where is the human? I don't want to say human dignity or the respect for for one another in, and mm. actually trying to educate each other on so many other different yeah. issues. And I suppose if you were to explore the story more, you might find what what was her situation, what was her background, what what led, what, what led to these things, to and these you might things. find that there's lots of different yeah. problems, mm. you know, building up to this. So how do we address those, or how do we journey with people yeah. that are, are going, going through, through these struggles? Because yeah. mm. there's a girl. Um, in one of the schools I worked in, she was in grade seven. And the te- like, I could tell there was something, there was an issue. Because on Fridays, that girl wouldn't come to school. We knew every Friday she was not coming to school. So I asked the teachers, I'm like, why is this girl not coming to school every Friday? And they're like, no, she's probably not home. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, that family is known that all the young girls from Friday, they are not home until the following Monday. Good Lord. And mm. the mom is okay with that. The mom is the reason why they're not home. He's mm. like, no, you're a grown woman. Go sort yourselves out. Mm. Sure. Yeah. So if you're coming <clears throat> from a family like that, dating an older guy, mm. you won't, I don't, I'm not going to say you're not going to see it as wrong, but mm. that's what you're told to do. Mm. So when you come back to society and society says, you are this bad person, how, how do we then balance all of yeah. that? How do you help someone like that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, 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 it's the challenge of morality, the challenge of respect, uh, respect of uh, rights, uh, women's rights, and mm-hmm. all. You know, I mean, in in that uh, particular case, especially with minors, and and it's it's violation of the. You know, when you look at the the Charter on Children's Rights, mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's the principle of the uh, best interest of the child. And mm-hmm. there, you have a clear violation of the best interest of the child. In in in. Uh, you know the rights of a child, the right to be a child, the right to have uh, education and enjoy your childhood as a mm. child. I mean, that really violates all those rights. And uh, I think one of the serious problems that uh, we are also facing is it's the issue. I mean, it, it boils down to morality, the moral degradation. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's that's one of the the, 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 the biggest problems we are facing in in our society in general, mm. you know, uh, and that's going concurrently with this violation of human rights that that we've been talking about and mm. the human dignity, you know, um, it's it's really a big problem. Yeah, we, it really is. It really is. <laughs> So um, another really important aspect or a group perhaps that um, has their, their rights and their dignity violated is um, migrants and refugees. And I know that on the 18th of December, we celebrate um, the UN's International Migrants Day. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if maybe you can tell us something about that. And um, Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think it's, uh, it's an important day in, this, in that uh, um, we know and we've heard a lot about migrants and uh, refugees and forcibly displaced people mm. and people on the move and human trafficked people so mm. <laughs> it's a, it's a huge uh, if i may use the word category of people mm. and um, so basically the day is to highlight and to well, to highlight the plight of migrants and to uh, make sure that uh, the their resilience they are um, yeah, their resilience is celebrated and mm. it doesn't go unnoticed. I mean, the statistics, they tell us now that we have over 281 million people wow. in the world wow. who live in a different place to what they would, under normal circumstances, call home. Mm-hmm. So, um, and of those 281 million, I think... Uh, the last time I checked, almost half, oh no, 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 not half, sorry, just over a hundred 
they have been forcibly displaced. Wow. You know, so and like over 100 million yeah. people. Yeah, over 100 million people have been forcibly <sighs> displaced with uh, as a result of wars, mm. Mm. climate change, uh, you know, violation of uh, human rights, human rights. Mm -hmm. violation of political rights and all those things. And what would be interesting, it would be to note that just before the war began in uh, between Ukraine and Russia, uh, we were sitting at about 80 something million displaced people. And then within a space of about uh, less than a year, mm. we were at 100 million wow. mark. So that means 20 million people <coughs> Almost 20 in the million. last uh, just over a year, a year yeah. and a half. It, it, wow. It's a result of just one war. Wow. Just sure. one war. And not almost, you almost can't get your mind around those yeah. kind of numbers. I mean, yeah. that's more than all of Gauteng. Yes. One more, one more, just in one in year, in, in, you know? in one in yeah. less than one year. Yeah. And and that's not counting like the ongoing wars in the eastern TRC, in mm. the Sahel region. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's just counting one more. That's just so one. you you can see that um war does a lot of damage and mm. uh, in, in people's lives. And uh so International Migrants Day, although it, it and and when you talk of migrants, it's just one big category. Like I said, you know, uh, uh, it, it's it's just a recognition of those people's lives and uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that the world is made aware that you have almost three hundred million people mm -hmm. who have had to move, yeah. and you do have those who voluntarily move off uh, because of what we call greener pastures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, in most cases. Those greener pastures, you can see. I mean, you can, if if you really dig deep, you realize that uh, they're not uh, as green. They are not as green, but the um, the causes, yeah, uh, still somewhere somehow mm. have to do with uh, some kind of violation. There, there of will always some be a push factor. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think it, it helps us to think about the push and pull factors. The push and pull. Migrants. Yes, exactly. The push and pull yeah. factors. Mm. I mean, you look at. Um, Let's look at economic injustices. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when somebody moves from uh, country X to country Y because they have better opportunities, it's because country Y, I mean, it's because, oh, sorry, country, country. X has got some economic disadvantages. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he or she realizes that in country Y, I can do better for my family, for my children mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and uh, live a more dignified life than where I am in country X. Yeah. So we, and, and this is some of the stuff that uh, Pope Francis alluded to in Laura to see when he was mm. talking about the economic situation of, of, of the world, economic mm. uh, structures. So people are forced to leave at the end of the day. I mean, uh, you know, people, they don't leave home uh, because, you know, uh, I just, <coughs> even what we call greener pastures, really, it's because yeah. there's something that's there's still a push factor. Yeah, yeah, there's still a push I mean, there factor. Are, there are people who move for the adventure of it, but I think yeah. that that number is small. Yeah. That's it's not in the 300 small. million. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. no. Yeah, huge yeah, and I, I mean, people like to move for touristic reasons, mm. you know, to yeah. go and visit places, see other countries, mm. which is fine. But, you know, to go and settle in another country, mm. really leave your relatives, leave, mm. leave your clan, you know, yeah. in the case of Africans, you know, to, to, to leave your, 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 mm. your place where you would really have all these social structures. Yes. Because remember, uh, in moving, there's also a, a, a compromise in the social structures that support us as, as human beings, you mm -hmm. know, be it family, be it... Uh, relatives and all that. Mm. It's a big upheaval when, yes. when one moves. Mm. Yeah. And I, I suppose that makes us think that the, the day also helps us to think about the <coughs> needs of migrants. So yeah. like, how yeah. do they move safely? How do they settle in mm. new places? Mm. And yeah. around the world, there's a strong anti-migrant sentiment. I mean, here in South yes. Africa, it's extremely strong. Mm. But mm. I know that in Europe, it's also very strong. And um, yeah. in America, it's very strong, especially in the southern states. And that's so, you mm. know, how do we and, and I think, uh, address uh, that? Now you have criminalization of migration. Wow. And these countries, <laughs> to countries where they move, mm. you will see that for as long as they have special skills, it's, it's not as cumbersome as the, let's say the general worker who, who doesn't have any skill or who has a, 
a, a secondary school certificate, mm -hmm. for example, you know. So you realize that there's also a bit of poaching that's going on uh, in, in the migration sector where many countries are denied the rare skills that they have and because these developed countries they lay mm. uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, mm. guys uh, people with with uh, special skills mm. and rare uh, skills to come and contribute to to the development of those countries mm. where it's, it's mm. a particular problem in zimbabwe i think where the the healthcare system there is really struggling mm. and yet like in england there are like thousands yeah. of zimbabwean, zimbabwean nurses, nurses and, <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 trained yeah. trained um, even well, doctors and, doctors yeah, yeah. Mm. so International Migration Day, it's, 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 it's all about all these issues, all these issues you know, yes. about, about migrants. And one other, one other factor which uh, we, we normally don't talk about when it comes to migration, and I remember Pope Francis when he was uh, visiting the Philippines in 2015, in January of 2015, he referred to it, the damage or the impact it has on the family. Yes. Oh, interesting, yeah. The yeah. family very suffers because yeah. of mm. mig migration, mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, we have uh, we have uh, a situation where uh, when either the father or the mother has to move to go to mm. another place or another city, another country, then it has an impact on the children, the bringing up mm. of the children, the family as a unit, the family as we know it suffers mm. because. Now you have a situation whereby instead of having two parents bringing up, work, uh, working together to bring up the kids, now you have one, if they're lucky, maybe both of them, they have mm -hmm. to migrate mm -hmm. sometimes to two different countries or to mm -hmm. two different cities. Mm -hmm. And then the, the children are left with the aunts and the uncles. And so the upbringing of children is disrupted. The family life as we know it, the traditional family life mm -hmm. is it's it's interrupted and so you know you have all those aspects of migration as well that we normally don't bring to the fore or we really don't talk about and uh, uh, sometimes not always but quite often they have a negative impact on the lives of the children of, and yeah. psychologically socially and, and morally but uh, you know for sorry to cut you mm. what you just mentioned now maybe that one of the parents is living in another province i experienced it with my family Growing up, my dad lived in Limpopo, mm -hmm. and then we lived with my mom here in Gatleho. We used to see our dad, I think, every two to three weeks sometimes. If you that is If we were lucky, yeah. or we would see him during school holidays because both my parents were teachers. Mm -hmm. And when he finally moved home, like, full-time day, every day, it was so strange. Like, mm -hmm. we had to learn to live yeah. with this man there has like, to be adaptation now we you know he's our dad but we <laughs> yeah. had to learn to live with him because there are mm. things that we were used to doing like mm. we didn't eat meat every day my dad if he's, there's no meat it means he didn't <laughs> have not a meal, meal. <laughs> yeah. and so, so yeah. I was like dude you'll have it tomorrow mm. he uh, also I, had to adjust to us and yeah. how we did things so I think it took a good three to five years for us to to be in a space where we're like Okay. okay. Now you've settled down. Yeah. Now you've settled in. <laughs> so you're going to get used to the yeah. two households. Yes. And yeah. I, my, my dad also immigrated um, mm. when I was a teenager to New Zealand. So mm. I also experienced this thing of having families, two families, you know, yeah. in two different countries. And yeah, it, it takes a long time. You never really get used to it, mm. I think. I mean, you learn how to live with it, but there's always something that makes yeah. you feel that this is, that's, I don't know. Yeah, you're always having to adjust to it. Yeah, you know, that, even, that is yeah. true. I, I mean, family yeah. life, it's not, it's never normal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, uh, because as you say, you know, like, for example, in your, in your case, in, you know, when, whenever you had to visit or he has to visit home, there's a disruption there in yes. the routine. And yes. This, mm -hmm. You know, whether be it for a short period or for a long period, there's always some. some uh, so, I mean, um, there are all sorts of challenges and, uh, you know, we're talking about the economic migrants now, and 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 there's also a lot of violation of human rights mm -hmm. in 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 the in the situation of <laughs> of, of migrants. You know, we talk of now one of the biggest problems that we have is that, like I was saying earlier on, that countries they it's easier to get a, a visa or a permit to live or work in a country in another country if you have special skills, yes. but you know, young pe people with no skills with 
uh, not, uh, not nothing to offer, but uh, sp- uh, they don't fall in the category of special. Uh, they mm-hmm. really struggle. They mm-hmm. they they are um, treated as commodities uh, sometimes, and that's why you have a lot of undocumented migrants and coming yes. in and. They suffer the most violations. I mean, we know, like in the Limpopo area, in the in the wine farms in the Cape, that many many undocumented migrants are being abused by farmers, by um, uh, uh, unscrupulous employers who sometimes even threaten them. I mean, th- th- there was one year I remember when I was still in the Western Cape, we went into the um, uh, the wine farms there, and people were telling us that they were working for almost eighteen hours, and wow. sometimes they wouldn't be paid. Wow. You wow. know, sometimes they just be given a box wine as kind of, you know, as like, as yeah. and, and, and when they complain, because the employer knows that they are undocumented, mm. they, they, they cannot go to the authorities. So they complain. don't have access to the kind of yes. legal defense. So yeah, those, it's an, uh, that's another mm. uh, area of, of, of uh, vulnerable uh, group of people mm. that, uh, and, and like we say, because of the economic injustices, because of the political injustices, mm-hmm. and people sometimes are forced to move from not because they want to, but they are forced. They're forced and to move. then, and then, they, and then they, here they're not able to get the proper they, documentation because yeah. they fall yeah. in one of those categories yeah. that finds it difficult. And, they, and, and then they become yeah. vulnerable even mm-hmm. more and, to uh, human rights abuses. Here. Yeah. 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 So, so these violation of human rights and all that. Mm. So they are interlinked. You know, there is a, a global connectedness in 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 mm. all these things, and mm. um, and and I think. The bottom line, if we can start seeing each other um, or respecting the human dignity intrinsic in each and every human being, Mm -hmm. that image of God, Mm -hmm. this, I think, it can give a different uh, perspective and treatment of each other. Yeah, Mm. we need to, like, learn to see people rightly again. Yes, exactly. And we'll learn how to treat them well. Yes, Mm -hmm. and appreciate them Mm -hmm. as as children of God. Mm -hmm. The question question I wanted to ask was, um, how did you get involved in the work of... um, you know, serving migrants, refugees, and and human rights and social justice. How did that come about for you? Well, um, growing up in Soweto, I was uh, I was really sensitive to the issue of justice and uh, uh, violation of human rights, as one would imagine. You know, um, I was a teenager in the eighties. Wow! During the state of emergency, during the have, state of emergency, mm, during mm, the riots in Soweto, mm, the upheavals and all that, mm. and uh, we were politically conscientized and to be honest with me uh we had the jesuits came into my parish you remember i was talking about being in the parish in orlando with saint martin de poros so the Jesuits started working in our parish in 1984 and that was the time when i was kind of finishing primary school going into secondary school and we had fortunately for us a uh, father Koli Lekete who was the first Jesuit to come and work in our parish and who really sensitized us. I think then I, I, I always say I didn't know about the Catholic social teaching, but here was this priest who was talking even in his homilies during that time about social justice issues, about uh, you know human dignity, treating each other with children as children of God and respecting uh, each other's rights and all that and kind of showing us that what, what was happening then that was wrong mm-hmm. and uh, was morally wrong. And, uh, okay, I, I was a teenager. I mean, like I said, I didn't know. But as, as one grows up, you realize that, oh, back then, Father was talking about the Catholic social teaching, you know, mm-hmm. when, once your eyes. And, and, and I think I, I, I agree totally with this phrase that the best kept secret. Because, <laughs> wow, yeah. Yeah, you know, the other day I was having a conversation with someone and he's, he's a very devout Catholic, very involved in his parish. And I said to him, do you know Catholic social teaching? And he was like, no, what's that? Yeah. I was like, yeah, what exactly. Do, what do you mean, no, what's that? It's and, like, and, it's a treasure in our, in our, in our tradition. Unfortunately, it's, it's still the best kept, uh, yeah. the best kept secret, yeah. uh, the, the Catholic social teaching, because mm. there is so much treasure. I mean, this, well, one of the instruments, or one of, one, 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 one of the, uh, yeah, instruments that we can use to, to help each other to grow and to be better Christians, to be better children of God, you know? So, that, uh, I think the seed was planted when I was a teenager back in the parish, mm. you know. And then, uh, of course, as you, in our training as, as Jesuits, you know, and then we are also sensitized. And then GC32 and, uh, mm. you know, that uh, decree on, uh, on on social justice and all So, so GC32 oh, being the, the 32nd General, General Congregation, Congregation of the Society of, of, the Society of Jesus. Of Jesus. <laughs> yes, yeah. 
So you know, and it it defined it defined the mission of the society as the uh, promotion, promotion of, of faith, faith and and, and, uh, and, 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 and what, what is it called now? Uh, promotion of faith and and. No propagation of faith and promotion of social yeah, of yeah. justice. Yeah, yeah, Prom- promotion of justice and uh, yeah. yeah. You should know it better than me. <laughs> I should know better, I'm, close <laughs> to the I'm a bit embarrassed that I'm not getting yeah. the articulation right. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, that was about justice, about and faith and justice, faith, faith, and, faith and justice. And it spoke together. about how mm. the that you couldn't have one without the other. The other, the, the, yeah. the, mm. the, the, Serving a faith that does justice, justice and, yeah. because they are they are one in the same, same in some sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and you will remember when when the thirty second general when when that document came out it was when there were the, all these upheavals and violation of human rights in latin america and mm. you know uh, in africa there were coups and all that and so it, the, the the jesuits were coming out and saying we need to work for our faith has to be a faith that works for justice mm. as well mm. so um so we we grew up with that and me coming from my background as well as a south african who grew up in soweto so all that made sense mm. so for mm. me to go into social justice work and uh, uh yeah protection of human rights it it almost came as a natural thing so when i was missioned in this area start firstly with the refugees and then later on with social social justice issues mm. we, it, it was a yeah it was, it was almost like a natural the, progression yeah, from things, your own history coming yeah, together from yes. what the society is about catholic teaching as yes, well yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. makes sense mm-hmm. um what we want to do on our podcast is after all this conversation i think end things on a good note yeah. so we say what is the good news so with everything that we spoke about the final message that you'd like to give but it has to be good news <laughs> it has to be good news because <laughs> oh, yeah. the question is what is the good what news <laughs> We just have to wow. accept them and embrace each other. Mm. So there are instruments and structures mm-hmm. to help us. We have the capacity. We just we need to do it. <laughs> yeah, we just need. And yeah, we just need to do it. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. you know, we have guidelines. We, have, I mean, like we're talking about the Catholic social teaching. Mm-hmm. We we have all these instruments. The Universal Declaration of mm-hmm. Human Rights. We have all these international conventions. Mm-hmm. We have the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. So we have all these structures mm-hmm. to help us. To treat to treat each other as human beings, as children of God, mm. we just have to embrace them and to learn to respect each other. Wow! Amen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Father. Yeah. Thank you for it's joining us. Yeah. Thank it's you. a pleasure. It's a pleasure, and thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you for being with us and having the conversation. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on our very first episode of Christ Alive. I think it was very inspired, very, um, what's this word? Moving. Moving. I found it to be a very, very moving and educational indeed. <laughs> and <yes>. educational. <laughs> um, thanks to, to Father for joining us and, and giving time to be mm-hmm, with us mm-hmm. today. Yeah. So. And thank you all for being with us and uh, giving us your time and, and, and experimenting by listening to the very first episode <laughs> of this podcast. Um, hope you felt like you were joining with us in this mm-hmm. conversation. And please, please do share your feedback, comments, anything, any advice any points let's keep the conversation going that it's not just in with this episode we will see you again soon with episode two